It was a dreary, misty evening in the bustling city of New York, and I found myself standing on the platform of the subway, waiting for the next train to arrive. The air was thick with the smell of grease and sweat, and the echoing sounds of footsteps and chatter filled the underground tunnels. As I stood there, lost in thought, I couldn't help but feel a sense of unease wash over me. Something about the subway always made me feel on edge, as if I were being watched by unseen eyes. It was a feeling I couldn't shake, no matter how hard I tried. Just as I was about to give up and turn back, the train arrived with a loud screech, its doors sliding open with a hiss. I hesitated for a moment, but the thought of being out in the cold and damp night was too much to bear, so I stepped aboard, taking a seat near the back of the car. As the train pulled away from the station, I tried to distract myself by looking out the window at the passing lights and shadows. But the longer we rode, the more my nerves seemed to get the better of me. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off, that something was lurking in the shadows, just beyond my sight. It was then that I heard it, a soft, guttural growl coming from somewhere behind me. I turned, heart racing, but saw nothing out of the ordinary. Just a group of tired commuters, lost in their own thoughts. But the growling persisted, growing louder and more insistent with each passing moment. And then, all at once, the lights flickered and went out, plunging the car into darkness. Panic set in as the growling grew louder, now joined by the sound of scraping claws on metal. I could feel the presence of something malevolent, something terrifying, closing in on me from all sides. I tried to get up, to run, but my legs wouldn't cooperate. I was frozen in place, unable to move as the creature drew closer and closer. And then, just as it seemed that all was lost, the light suddenly started flickering, revealing a sight that sent a chill down my spine. There, standing just a few feet away, was a creature unlike any I had ever seen. It was a hulking mass of fur and muscle, with glowing red eyes and sharp, curved claws. Its snarling maw was filled with razor-sharp teeth, and a thick, putrid scent filled the air. I wanted to scream to run, to do anything to get away from that monster. But I was too terrified to move, too horrified to even breathe. And then, as the lights flickered, the creature vanished, leaving me alone in the empty subway car. I sat there for what felt like an eternity, trembling and trying to make sense of what had just happened. Had I really just seen a monster on the subway? Or was it all just some terrible nightmare? As the train finally pulled into the next station, I gathered my wits and fled, not stopping until I was safely above ground and out in the open air. It was only then that I realized the true horror of what had just happened. I had encountered a creature straight out of the nightmares, and I knew, deep down, that I would never be the same again. I stumbled through the streets, my mind racing with fear and confusion. I couldn't believe what had just happened, and I couldn't shake the feeling that the creature was still out there, stalking me in the shadows. It was a dark and stormy night in the city of New Orleans. The streets were empty and the only sound that could be heard was the rain pitter pattering against the pavement. I had been working late at my office and was now making my way home on the subway. As I descended the stairs into the station, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The air was thick with an eerie silence and there was a sense of foreboding that seemed to hang in the air. I made my way to the platform and waited for the train to arrive. It wasn't until a few minutes later that I realized I was the only one there. No other commuters were waiting for the train and the station was completely empty. Just as I was about to turn around and leave, the train arrived with a loud screech. The doors opened and I stepped inside, my heart racing with fear. The train was empty except for a lone figure at the other end of the car. I tried to ignore the feeling of dread that washed over me and took a seat as far away from the figure as possible. But as the train started to move, the figure slowly made its way towards me. I could see that it was a man, but his face was obscured by a hooded cloak. He stopped just a few feet away from me and I could feel his eyes boring into me. Who are you? I asked, trying to keep the fear out of my voice. The man didn't answer. Instead, he reached into his cloak and pulled out a small knife. My heart skipped a beat as he approached me, the knife glinting in the dim light of the train. I tried to get up and run, but my legs felt like lead. I was trapped, with nowhere to go. The man stood over me, his eyes cold and empty. Just when I thought it was the end, the train came to a sudden stop. The man turned and walked away, disappearing into the darkness of the subway tunnels. I let out a sigh of relief and ran to the nearest exit. I didn't stop until I was out of the station and safe on the streets above. I never spoke of that night to anyone, but the memory of it still haunts me to this day. I never took the subway alone again. 
and the thought of stepping foot in that station fills me with fear. The memory of that dark and stormy night will stay with me forever, a reminder of the dangers that lurk in the shadows of the city. It was a rather calm autumn night. I had been out with some friends and it was late, so I decided to take the subway home. I wasn't too concerned about it, as I had taken the subway countless times before without incident. However, as I descended the stairs into the subway station, I was immediately engulfed by a strange feeling. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The station was empty, save for a few homeless men huddled in the corner. I tried to ignore the eerie silence and headed towards the turnstile. As I swiped my metro card, I noticed a man standing a few feet away from me, staring at me intently. He was dressed in all black and had a hood pulled over his head, obscuring his face. I brushed it off as paranoia and continued on my way. As I waited for the train, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I turned around and saw the hooded man standing a few feet behind me, still staring. I felt a shiver run down my spine and quickly turned back around, pretending not to notice. The train finally arrived and I practically ran to get on, relieved to be getting out of the empty station. As the doors closed behind me, I let out a sigh of relief. However, as the train began to move, I realized that the hooded man had somehow gotten on with me. Shaken to the core but still I tried to ignore him, focusing on my phone and pretending to be engrossed in my music. However, I couldn't shake the feeling that he was still staring at me. I snuck a glance in his direction and saw that he had moved closer to me, still with that intense gaze. I felt my heart racing and my palms starting to sweat. I didn't know what this man wanted, but I knew I needed to get away from him. I quickly gathered my things and made my way towards the back of the train, trying to put as much distance between us as possible. As I sat there, trembling with fear, I couldn't help but think about all the horror stories I had heard about the subway. The tales of people disappearing, never to be seen again. The stories of strange creatures lurking in the tunnels. I tried to come up with a plan. I could try to get off at the next stop and run to the police, but what if he followed me? I could try to make a scene and attract the attention of the other passenger, but what if no one cared? As I sat there, paralyzed with fear, I suddenly felt a tap on my shoulder. I jumped, expecting to see the hooded man standing there, but instead it was an elderly woman with a kind face. She had appeared out of the blue. Are you okay, dear? She asked, concern etched on her face. I hesitated before nodding, not wanting to cause a scene. However, the woman didn't seem convinced. You don't have to be afraid, she said softly. I'll stay with you until you get off. Tears welled up in my eyes as I realized that this stranger was willing to put herself in potentially dangerous situation to help me. I gratefully accepted her offer, and together, we made it to my stop without incident. As I stepped off the train and onto the platform, I couldn't help but feel relieved. I turned to thank the woman, but she was already gone, vanished into thin air. I made my way home that night, shaken but grateful for the kindness of a stranger. I never saw the hooded man again, but the experience stayed with me. It was a Wednesday night, and I was on my way home from work in New York City. The rain was coming down in sheets as I made my way to the subway station on the Upper West Side. I had been working late at the advertising agency where I was an intern, and all I could think about was getting home and crawling into bed. But as I walked towards the subway station, a feeling of unease washed over me. The streets were eerily quiet and the only sound was the rain pounding against the pavement. I tried to shake it off and kept walking, reminding myself that I had taken this route home countless times before and nothing had ever happened. But as I descended the steps into the subway station, the feeling only grew stronger. The dim lighting and echoing footsteps made the place feel like a labyrinth of terror. I hesitated before swiping my metro card and stepping onto the platform, trying to calm my racing heart. I checked the clock and saw that it was almost midnight. Great, I thought, just what I need, to be stuck on a deserted subway platform in the middle of the night. The wait for the train felt like an eternity. Every creak and groan of the old subway system made me jump, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I kept glancing around, trying to see if anyone was there, but the platform was empty. Finally, the train arrived with a screech of brakes and a gust of wind. I hurried on board, grateful to be out of the creepy station. But as the doors closed and the train pulled away, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. The car was empty except for a few people scattered throughout, all lost in their own worlds. I tried to distract myself by staring at my phone, 
but I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was standing right behind me. I turned around, expecting to see a crowded subway car, but instead I was met with a pair of glowing eyes. I gasped and stumbled backwards, tripping over a seat and landing on the ground. When I looked up, the eyes were gone and the car was empty. I must be hallucinating, I thought, trying to calm my breathing. But as the train continued on its journey, the feeling of being watched only grew stronger. I could hear the sound of footsteps behind me, but whenever I turned around, there was no one there. My heart was pounding in my chest and I was starting to feel like I was going to have a panic attack. Just as I was about to get off at my stop and make a run for it, the train came to a sudden halt. The lights flickered and the air grew thick with tension. I could hear whispers and footsteps all around me, but no matter how hard I looked, I couldn't see anyone. It was like I was trapped in some kind of nightmare. Suddenly, a voice boomed through the car. Welcome to the afterlife. I couldn't take it anymore. I jumped up and ran towards the door, trying to pry it open. But it was stuck fast and I was trapped. I was about to lose it when the light suddenly came back on and the door swung open. I stumbled out onto the platform and collapsed, my heart racing and my mind spinning. When I finally gathered the courage to look back at the train, it was gone and the platform was empty. I had no idea what had just happened, but I knew one thing for sure, I was never taking the subway again. I stumbled out of the station, my legs shaking and my mind racing. I couldn't believe what had just happened. Was it all just a hallucination brought on by my overactive imagination? Or had I really experienced something paranormal on that subway train? I decided to try and shake off the experience and make my way home. I hailed a taxi and gave the driver my address, trying to push the terrifying events of the night out of my mind. But as I sat in the back of the cab, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being followed. I kept glancing out the rear window, trying to see if anyone was there, but the streets were empty. Finally, we arrived at my apartment building and I rushed inside, grateful to be home. I locked the door behind me and collapsed onto the couch, still trying to make sense of what had happened. I couldn't shake the feeling that I had encountered something truly frightening on that subway train. I decided to do some research and see if anyone else had had similar experiences. As it turns out, I wasn't alone. There were countless stories of people encountering strange and unexplained occurrences on the subway. Some claimed to have seen ghosts, while others reported hearing voices and footsteps when no one was there. I couldn't believe it. I had always thought of the subway as a safe and convenient way to get around the city, but now I couldn't shake the feeling that it was a place of danger and terror. I made the decision to never take the subway again, choosing to walk or take a taxi instead. It may take me a little longer to get around, but at least I know I'll be safe.